Your personal message on this uh, album is, is pretty cool. It says, well, hi there. <laughs> Long bike train. Yeah. Fall on my face, get up, fall on my face, climb up the ladder, you know, fall down. You know, it, it, that, that's what it's all about. That's how you get better. I'm done. It is done? I turned it in. It's turned in, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. What are we going to talk about now? This week on Headline Country, we'll head to the farm with Josh Turner. Taylor Swift goes to YouTube to launch her brand new single. Tim McGraw gives back to the families of our military serving overseas. And we'll catch up with rising star JT Hodges. Plus, after a very long wait, Faith Hill is finally back with brand new music. Hey guys, I'm JT Hodges, and Headline Country starts right now. Hello everybody, I'm Stormy Warren. Welcome to Headline Country. We begin this week with a visit to Turnerland, also known as the sprawling country retreat enjoyed by Josh Turner and his family. Rolling hills, giant trees, fish ponds, and even its own long black train. Really? Not to mention a beautifully restored antique tractor and one perfectly timed late summer thunderstorm. The only problem with Josh's rural paradise? He doesn't get to see it enough. We caught up with Josh during a rare down day on the farm to talk about his new live album and tractors. Couldn't ask for a better set to talk about a Cracker Barrel album. It looks like we're on the front porch <laughs> of a Cracker Barrel. This is your house. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. It's my music house, I guess. My, my writer's cottage out here, and I built it specifically to write in, to keep my music stuff in. Eight of the songs that I wrote in here af after I finished it ended up on this new punching bag record. I'm a punching bag, hit me all you want to. I got pretty thick skin. So it, it's a special place for me, and, and like I say, I. I've been able to separate the music stuff from our house, and, <laughs> and so I don't have to subject them to it, and I don't have to be distracted by things. I take it on the chin till I'm black and blue. Country life for you is, uh, you're no stranger to it. I mean, this is what you've always wanted, isn't that true? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in a farming community down in South Carolina. You know, it was farming and hunting and fishing and, you know, fish fries and cookouts and, yeah. you know, Wednesday night suppers at church. And it's hard with what I do now with all the traveling and the red carpets and the, you know, the glitz and the glamour side of it um, to continue to try to feel like a, a normal person or, or sure. maintain that country lifestyle. Time is love. Time at home is important, but you do spend a lot of time on the road and that's what this new project is all about. It's about yeah. giving a little time capsule to your fans of what life is like and how each town can almost sound completely different. Not one town is repeated on this. It's each right. one from a completely <laughs> different town, all, tw all 12 tracks. Can you hear the different energy from each of the live tracks? Do you feel it? I can, yes, because you know every show is different, every city's different, and I'm glad my fans will get to hear it because a lot of times when my fans hear me, they're hearing me in their hometown, and that's what they're used to, right. and, and that's it. It's your second album with Cracker Barrel. You mentioned the country lifestyle that you were brought up in. You know, that's a natural marriage right there. Why does this partnership work so well? You know, their company motto is pleasing people, and, and that's always what I've been about, too. Sometimes I get too caught up in that, you know, because I, I realize... And become a punching bag. Yeah, exactly, because, you know, you can't please everybody, but um, just like Cracker Barrel wants their customers to, to walk away with a good experience, and they want them to come back. And, and so yeah. I want my fans to continue to buy my records and uh, to continue to come to my shows. This is for all you uh, beautiful ladies out here in the crowd. This is a little song called Eye Candy. You have a personal message on this, on this album that uh, basically tells the fans, hey, before I signed my record deal, I didn't get to see a lot. I just saw a lot of pictures of these places that I've been lucky enough to uh, enjoy and encounter. What, what's it like to, to flash back on what you've been able to experience in your job? Well, I was thinking about that this morning. I was thinking about my grandparents and my parents and my mama's daddy um, and how he had really encouraged me to start playing guitar. Had he not, you know, taken the time or the effort to, you know, encourage me to do that, I, I never would have started writing songs. And those songs have, have been the means to take me you know, to all four corners of the United States to take me to the White House, to take me to the Grand Ole Opry, to take me 
you know, just all these places that I never thought I would ever go. One of the things that also helps keep you grounded is that toy that you, we just saw you driving around in. Uh, yeah. 1952 John Deere tractor. Yeah. And that, that was your grandfather's? Yeah, my, my granddaddy, my daddy's daddy, he grew everything you can imagine. And so pretty much everything that, that was on their table came from their their garden. You know, he just had a way about it, and that's what he loved doing, and that's actually what he was doing when he died. Look at this. A little special commemorative plaque on your on, on the tractor in his honor. Yeah, I, I didn't want to just restore it. I wanted to have something on here to let people know that didn't know um, that this was kind of in memory of, you know, him and what kind of what he stood for and and uh, and all that. Nice job. All right. Well, I'm going to roll the dice and see if I can fire this all thing right. up. All Hop right. Up on the other side here. Pull your starter right there. Here it goes. And once it starts, jack Here's the throttle your... all the way up. Wish us luck. Three, two, one. so much. I'm Josh Turner. I love each and every one of you. Y'all have a great set now. Thank y'all. Since releasing his first single, Long Black Train, Josh has made it known that his goal was to follow in the footsteps of his idol, Randy Travis. Well, since that time, the two have collaborated on numerous projects and have even become friends. But it hasn't been a smooth few months for Randy. For the second time in less than a year, Randy has run into a bit of trouble with the law, both times involving a car and alcohol. I asked Josh his thoughts on Randy's apparent tailspin. First of all, it breaks my heart. You know, it, 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 you know it, it's a burden on me. You know, I've always said from the time I got into this business that I'd, I haven't learned just from the success of my heroes. I've learned from their mistakes. And, you know, we're all human, and I know that uh, Randy's going through a tough time right now, and, and he's, uh, you know, obviously in my thoughts and prayers, and, uh, you know, hope he, hopefully he can kind of, you know, get this under control. Look for Josh's Live Across America album in your local Cracker Barrel neighborhood store. His current album, Punching Bag, is also available wherever music is sold. When we come back, you'll never, ever believe how Taylor Swift launched her brand new single. Well, here's what we know about Taylor Swift's new project. It's titled Red, features 16 songs, and will be released on October 22nd. She revealed those details and debuted the first single, We're Never, Ever Getting Back Together, via a live YouTube chat with her fans. The big announcement and news about new Faith Hill music kicks off our look at some of the stories making country headlines this week. While Faith Hill and Tim McGraw announced their adventure in Sin City, Faith also revealed new music is on the horizon. After seven long years of waiting, fans will soon be able to grab the superstar's latest album. The album we've been talking about forever. I'm done. It is done? I turned it in. <laughs> it's turned in, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Finally? yes. What are we gonna talk about now? We have a lot to talk <laughs> about. <laughs> I can't wait for everybody to, to hear it. I, I've listened to her album over and over and it's, it's, it's just a special project. I can't wait for people to hear it. With a love for both country and soul music, Faith reveals this project will be her deepest and most passionate yet. And although the Mississippi girl hasn't decided what the name of the record will be or when we can pick it up, you can be sure you're gonna hear some of the new songs in Vegas. Darius Rucker may be hard at work on his third country album, but is another Hootie and the Blowfish album on the horizon as well? According to the singer himself, the answer is yes. In a recent interview with Billboard magazine, Rucker confessed that while he's established himself as a successful country solo artist, he's not yet ready to call it quits with Hootie. Adding, quote, there's one more Hootie record and tour that we're going to do. I don't know when, because country music is my day job. It's what I want to do. We'll probably always be a band. We'll do another album and tour for a year. Then I'll be right back to this music. All right. And it's this music that Darius says he plans to focus on next. Now that he's just wrapped his touring gig with Lady Antebellum, a new single is expected to hit radio in the next few weeks with the new country album following later this year.
The guys of Love and Theft are thanking their guardian angel this week. Along with their recent Top 5 Country album debut, the duo has just learned that the collection's lead-off single, Angel Eyes, has become their career-first number one hit. It's a good feeling. Our first record came out when our single was at like 17 on the charts, so it feels like you know things are just kind of falling into place. Like. We'd, we'd hope they would. You could catch Love and Theft out on the road as part of Brad Paisley's virtual reality tour. Visit HeadlineCountry.net for more. It's what I love about them. No stranger to giving back, Rodney Atkins has added his voice to a new song titled The Choice with about 20 of his closest country friends in an effort to help provide shoes to people in need. We've all got a choice to make before our time on earth is up. If we want to be a part of something bigger than us. Teaming up with the charity Souls for Souls, Rodney tells Headline Country, quote, When I was approached to contribute vocals on The Choice, I immediately reverted back to my adolescence and when I first heard We Are the World in the 80s. Today we have the opportunity to make an impact on children and adults in a very real way. And I hope people will once again come together to support this song benefiting Souls for Souls. We are the one, a spirit. The choice brings together the most country artists ever to collaborate on one project, including Alan Jackson, Reba McIntyre, Kelly Pickler, Keith Urban, and more. For every download of the song, a new pair of shoes will be given to someone in need. Well, they came in here today and they got some nice tennis shoes on their feet, so they're real happy about that. They don't have to uh, be embarrassed wearing their sister and their mom's shoes anymore. Hit up headlinecountry.net to find out how you can help. Still to come, Tim McGraw teams up with the ACM's Lifting Lives Foundation to help the families of those serving overseas. Welcome back to Headline Country. Well, their big summer tour, Brothers of the Sun, is winding down with two big shows at Gillette Stadium in Massachusetts this weekend. And along with the Tim McGraw and Kenny Chesney hits and tailgating fun, Tim and the Academy of Country Music made sure some deserving military families got a boost at each tour stop as well. The ACM's Lisa Lee has the story. Tim McGraw has been filling up stadiums across the country this summer on his Brothers of the Sun tour, and he's also filling up houses in every town he visits. Tim has joined forces with Chase Bank and ACM Lifting Lives to provide mortgage-free homes to military families in need through Operation Homefront which gives emergency financial and other help to wounded servicemen and women and their families. I just couldn't think of a better program to be involved with. I mean, when you're talking about safety and security, what better thing to provide a wounded warrior than, than safety and security, a place to keep their family. So I, I thought it was a great idea. I'm proud of it. That's all I can say. I'm just proud to be the facilitator and be a part of this. Tim spends time with the families at every tour stop, including Anaheim, California, where he met Marine Sergeant Anthony Hodge, who was wounded in Iraq. I just know he's been always dedicated to the military, and guys all the time talk about the things he's done, his concert, and he, he always gives shots out to us, and, and uh, he, he just supports us in everything that he can do. And I think the overwhelming thing that, that's come out of him for me is, is getting these guys to realize that they deserve it. And I think that that's the biggest thing, and I think that being a soldier in general is a self-sacrificing and uh, endeavor, and you, you don't think about yourself, you don't think about what you deserve, what you don't deserve, you're just doing it for your country, and doing it for your family, doing it for security, and doing it for all the right reasons. So it's hard to accept something like that, but, but I think that's the most overwhelming thing for me is, is the pride that these guys have. Give a big hand for all our wounded warriors and all our veterans, for Chase, for Operation Homefront, for the Academy of Country Music, giving away free homes to our wounded warriors and taking care of those guys like they take care of us. I've been part of ACMs for a long, long time. I've been in this career for a long, long time, and they've been with me for a long time. So, I, And they've done fantastic things for charity throughout the entire association that I've had with them. So I thought it was just a perfect match. I think having a house is, is the American dream, and uh, especially now with today's economy, it's hard for anybody to get a house. So for me to be blessed to receive a free house is, is just it's a dream come true. 
For information on the ACM's Lifting Lives Foundation and Operation Homefront, visit acmcountry.com. Coming up, we'll visit the creative world of JT Hodges. Well, last but not least this week, we hunt down one of country's fast rising stars, former ACM New Artist nominee, JT Hodges. He caught our attention with his debut single, the whistling song, Hunt You Down. And now even more ears are hearing the talented singer-songwriter thanks to his current hit, Goodbyes Made You Mine. We sat down with JT at his home right here in Nashville. And we danced, and we laughed, never talked about tomorrow. It's here in the sanctuary of JT Hodge's writing room that songs about love gained and lost have been created. Now they finally made their way to his just released debut album. I'm very excited about this, this album coming. Uh, when we released the first single, which was Hunt You Down, and then uh, Goodbyes Made Your Mom was next, and then we got the next single coming out with the record. I, I, I told everybody this is a diverse album, and um, I look forward to you know, kind of getting feedback from what everybody else thinks. After eight years, three singles, and lots of help from his record label's owner, Toby Keith, JT has discovered that Music City does in fact live up to its name, and he fits right in. I, uh, I co-wrote uh, eight of the ten songs that are going to be on the album, which is, is a lot to me. I mean, considering you know, this, this town and kind of why I moved here was, was for the songwriting. But it just, it just worked out that uh, you know, a lot of the songs that needed to go on this first introductory album I just happened to, to be a part of in the writing process. Yeah, I'm proud of that. Growing up in the recording studio, his parents owned not only helped JT hone his craft, it helped him uncover his unique and diverse sense of music. One day Delbert McClinton would be in there, another day T-Bone Burnett would be in there working with an act, and you know, here I am, I'm a young kid, I'm two or three years old running around in the console, but you pick that up subconsciously. Such an instinctive thing, you know, when you're writing songs, when you're singing it, it's, it's not really something you can talk about or put down on paper of like, this is why I do this. It's, it's just a feel thing. I know it'd be a matter of time till all those goodbyes made you mine. Fans are probably gonna really enjoy hearing uh, When I Stop Crying. I remember when we tracked that song and I sang it, I said, I, I sure would love to hear Vince Gill singing uh, harmonies on this. And, and a week later they called and said, hey, not only is Vince gonna come sing on it, he's gonna come play on it. And so that, that blew me away. Just kind of being in the studio with, with Vince, watching you know a country music legend do his thing he stops like midway through i think it was the second take and he doesn't say anything to mark he doesn't say anything to don he just looks straight at me he's like jt i'm like yes mr gill <laughs> i think i did say yes mr gill um what do you think man I, I, do you like me coming right in on the one after after the end of that second chorus and i said well i, I honestly what feels right to me is it's kind of waiting Come in into three of the, uh, the next bar just kind of surprises me. He's like, yeah, I think so too. Let's go with that. And I was like, if I only sell one record and you know my, my career's over, I've got that. I can tell my grandchildren about that. And being a part of Toby Keith's record label, it's probably a good idea to get the big dog daddy's approval. He loves the record. He was kind of like, you do your thing. I'm pulling for you if you need me. I'm, I'm here. But he's letting me be an artist. He's letting me fall on my face, get up fall on my face, climb up the ladder, you know, fall down, you know, it, 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 that's what it's all about. That's how you get better. I ain't the same, Lord, let you go around you around. This whole journey for me has always been about getting better. I've taken it day, day by day and just tried to write a better song, tried to sing a song better, tried to play a song better. And uh, I think all of that, the blood, sweat and tears, is gonna come out on this debut album for me. Hopefully it opens up a path for more records and, and, and more fans. You know, each fan that comes along, they're, it's, 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 it's their music too, and we'll take the journey together. Well, it looks like Toby Keith may have finally found success with another label mate other than himself. JT's album on Show Dog Universal is in stores now. 
Well, that's it for this week. Next time, we'll take a look at our travel log, recapping the biggest tours of the year. Until next week, keep up with everything that's going on in country at headlinecountry.net or gactv.com. Also on Twitter at Headline Country, or you can follow me at Stormy Warren. Take care, everybody. Together.